up. I don't want this life anymore. Hi, I'm Dr. James Maz. I'm a University of Washington professor in the College of Education in the area of school psychology. So I work with kids' educational needs, primarily on the side of social emotional learning. And in that specific area, I work with kids' anxiety, depression, trauma, uh, suicidal behavior, self-harm, and then self-medicating behaviors as well. So one of the things that we're gonna do here in this clip is we're gonna listen to a conversation that Danny is having with his physical therapist, Lynn. Danny's seeing Lynn because he's been in an accident and he has a prosthetic arm now and he's learning how to cope with that prosthetic arm and is having some, what we'd expect to be, you know, reasonable emotional reactions to that and being frustrated. Oh. Danny, what's up? I don't want this life anymore. I wanna go back to normal. A new normal is what we're working toward. This isn't normal. This will never be normal. So this opening clip opens up with Danny saying, things will never be normal. And he, he puts a lot of emphasis and anger. Things will never be normal. So he has that type of frustration that seems to be that this will never be normal, right? And so that he uh, is seeing things only from one side. And this is really common among our adolescents. And it usually means that they're having this emotional difficulty, emotional intensity, and that those emotions that they're having are so strong that it's controlling their thoughts and how they are perceiving things. So when our emotions start driving the bus is what we say, when that happens, we start to make decisions that really impact things a lot more, right? That makes things a lot worse when we're in our emotion mind. And so one of the things we wanted to discuss and learn about is that when our emotion intensities are really high, we, we begin to have those start to cloud over our cognitive abilities. And so what happens there is that we begin to make decisions out of the emotion rather than out of trying to look at all the things in the environment. And so we don't want to be an emotion mind. What we want to do is be able to do to distract from things and to get those emotional intensities down so we can make decisions in what we call wise mind. And so it's important that we're able to validate when somebody is in emotion mind and help them learn some skills to distract them from the intense emotions or to reduce the intensity of those emotions as we go forward. I keep thinking I'm gonna wake up from this nightmare, but I never do. Danny. I can't play guitar or play basketball with my brother or walk down the street without people staring at me. My life is over. Danny, I hear you. You've had so much to adjust to. It's okay to feel like this. in the next clip here, where uh, Lynn says, Danny, I hear you, you have so much to adjust to, it's okay to feel this way. That's a great example of validation, where Danny needs to be heard that his emotion makes sense to the situation that's there, right? And by doing so, Danny's allowed to feel that strong emotion without making things worse at that point. And it, he's allowed to say, uh, my frustration is here. This is what's happening to me. And then Lynn says, I get it, right? And that she, she says, it's okay to feel this way. Danny then pauses when Lynn says, it's okay to feel this way, to suggest that Danny's now thinking about what Lynn said, rather than Lynn trying to talk Danny out of why he shouldn't be angry, all right? Really important that Lynn doesn't do that, because that would be invalidating. By saying, I get it, you have a right to feel this way, there's a lot more validation. And Danny can sit with that and say, oh, maybe maybe Lynn does get this. Do you think you might want to talk to someone about how you've been feeling? I need a new life, not a therapist. Okay then, when you're ready. Until then, let's work on that new normal. And what's interesting is that Lynn then suggests, hey Danny, do you want to talk to somebody? And Danny's like, no, I don't need a therapist. All right. So the suggestion is great by Lynn, and she drops the suggestion as soon as Danny says, no, I don't need a therapist, right? What I need is how to figure this out, right? And so Lynn doesn't say, well, I think you should do this, I think you should do that, because that would be uh, only push Danny to be more defensive. But allowing Danny to be in control of what he wants to do, Lynn's, uh, it, gives, it empowers him for the, that next step. And so Lynn simply says, okay, when you're ready. In the meantime, let's go back to learning about this new normal. 
And I think here it becomes really important. So Danny gets the message that, hey, if you change your mind, let me know. I think that's really important. And in the meantime, I'm going to do my job, which is helping you learn the new normal of writing with your other hand. And I think that's important that she pivots back to the new normal to help Danny realize that this is what's happening. You know, it's part of that radical acceptance that we talk about in some of our skills that we use, right? That the, Danny has to radically accept that he's going to use a different hand to write with now after the accident. Uh, validation becomes really important as us adults are working with our adolescents. With that, I am Dr. James Mazza with this Parent Guidance Moment. Thank you for sharing this moment with me.